I think this is just remarkable for finally UTM to have TEDx. We've been waiting for this moment for such a long time. And we must thank our heroes, the students who have organized this. And this is what my topic is all about. How do we nurture future heroes in UTM? And not just in UTM, but in universities. When we talk about universities, what do we think it is? What is the role of university? Why are you all here spending, if you're an undergraduate student, four years of your life? If you're a doctoral student, you're lucky. If you're here, three years. Usually, you spend more years as a doctoral student. So are you here to look for that piece of paper so that you can get a job? Yes or no? No! <laughs> I'm going to chase after you, whoever said that yes. <laughs> you are not here to look for that piece of paper. That's not why you are in university. It's not about getting the qualification. It's not about getting that degree. It's not about using that piece of paper for you to get a job. It's about transforming your life. It's about changing yourself to become a better person. It's about changing the lives of others. Changing the economy of your country. Many of UTM students come from countries so far away. And they aim to go back to transform their village, their city, wherever they come from. And likewise, the Malaysian students. So it is no easy task for any university to undertake that responsibility. How do we educate future global citizens, future heroes for the world? So I thought I would share my journey. My journey in academia actually began way back in 1982 after I finished my SPM. Don't calculate how old I am, yeah? <laughs> Please. I am always 17. I look like I'm 17, right? You better say yes. <laughs> one of you will be in my class one day. <laughs> So in 1982, when I was just 17, I went halfway around the world. I've never left Malaysia at that time. I've never even left. You know, it, it was such an amazing experience to go to Miami to do computer science degree. And after that, I followed with, because I was supposed to be there for four years, but I finished in three years. So I followed through with a master's in business administration and I still had six, another one year so I followed with another master's degree. So I ended up with three degrees instead of just one. Why? Because I thought it was an amazing experience. The whole process, the whole educational experience of being in Miami was transformational for me. And I came back, served a university, ITM, and ITM was a totally new experience for me as well. Because I was at the age of 21, teaching students who were 26 and 27 years old, much older than me advanced diploma students. They were graduating students because of the subjects that I was teaching. It was sheer desire that I wanted to do my doctoral studies. I wanted to do my PhD so much, but they said, you must wait for your queue. You must wait for your turn. You're too young. You're too junior. You cannot do your PhD yet. I got the opportunity 
to move to UTM Skudai, right here in Skudai, because I married my dear husband back there. <laughs> By the way, he's always supporting me in all of my ventures. Whatever I do, he's always there supporting me. So thank you, dear, for being here. So we served UTM and we got the opportunity to actually, I got the opportunity and then he got it, to do our PhD in United Kingdom. So we went to England in 1993 to do our doctoral studies. And we came back in 1996 to serve UTM. Now what do I want to highlight here? Going from Malaysia to United States, back to Malaysia, then to United Kingdom, then back to serve UTM. From ITM, which as you know, Okay, has a certain uh, characteristics, and then down to Johor to serve UTM, which is very, very different from ITM. Wherever you go, whichever part of the world that you go for your studies, you must cherish the experience. It is not just about going to classes. It is not just about scoring your exams. It is not just about getting the A's. Mr. Lo, it is about getting the A's, but it is not just about getting the A's. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is about learning about life. How many of you actually ask yourself, what is the meaning of life? How many of you actually ask yourself, why am I slaving myself, putting myself through this sheer torture, quote unquote, I tell you, being in university is never a torture, it's so enjoyable. <laughs> I, I truly believe it. Because you make it enjoyable. If your mindset says, oh, I hate going to classes, or oh, I, I hate doing these assignments, why the lecturer asked me to do this assignment and go to this company and do collect, collect data or do experiments at the lab, you must take it in a positive manner. It is all about learning. It's all about educating yourself. It's all about equipping yourself, not just with knowledge, skills, but you also want to equip yourself with other competencies. What are the competencies that you learn? You learn about, we talked about relationships just now. We talk about team working, leadership. We talk about communication, learning how to communicate and present your ideas. We talk about ethics, morality, spirituality. All of that we learn in university because that is part of life. When I came back in 1996, immediately I was given administrative position. From 1996 right down to, for your information, I was just uh, I just ended my term as the Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Academic and International. So 20 years in academic administration. What's the difference of being an academic administrator and being a lecturer? The difference is, as an academic administrator, we are responsible for the systems that we have in place in the education institution. We are responsible for the policies that we put to guide the education process. We are responsible to monitor the implementation of these policies. We are answerable to these policies that we have and to the strategies that we have in place. We are accountable 
for the delivery of the education that we provide in the university. To do that, at the national level, there are blueprints. And the blueprint that we have currently is the Malaysian Education Blueprint for Higher Education 2015 to 2025, which outlines 10 shifts for transforming higher education in Malaysia. And we are guided by that document. As policymakers, all the administrators, the vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellor, deans, every manager, director has to ensure that the millions, I tell you it's millions, that has been poured into formulating the plans, the blueprint is actually carried out. So does it mean when I'm no longer an administrator, I wash my hands from this? Is the answer yes or no? No. In fact, I am so passionate to make sure that academia, the environment, and the community for the pursuit of research, education, and scholarship in UTM thrives understands how do we educate each and every one of our students to become not just a person with a Bachelor of Engineering, okay, a Master's in Business Administration, okay, I have a Master's in Chemical Engineering, or I have a Master's in Mathematics, or I have a Master's in Management, or I have a Bachelor in Technology Management, I have a Bachelor in Education. No, it's not just about the paper qualification. It's about producing individuals who are responsible. What are these individuals? How do we ensure that our graduates become superheroes for the 21st century? How do we ensure that our graduates are holistic, entrepreneurial, as well as balanced as they serve the community, the institution, the organization, the country that they belong to, as they become global citizens. What do we mean by heroes? Not flying across from one building to another, although I sometimes wish I could, especially when I'm, I wake up in the morning and rushing about, sometimes I wish that I can just... <laughs> just now, they, they, okay, I didn't wear the tag. What's your, all of you have tags. What does it say on your tag? My superhero name. So I always see myself as Wonder Woman. Why? Because actually my name is not Rose. My name is Linda. That's what I've been, always been called since I was born, right up till I returned in 1996. Only they called me, started calling me Rose when I got my PhD. So Linda, what's the name of Wonder Woman? Linda what? Oh, all of you are too young. <laughs> Lo, you must remember what's the name of the actress who is Wonder Woman. Oh my God. Oh, thank you. I'm going to treat you dinner tonight. <laughs> okay, I'm done. We treat Lo for dinner. <laughs> the name, her name is Linda Carter. Okay, she's beautiful. She's smart, she helps people, she's compassionate, she's totally selfless. When we are superheroes, we don't think about ourselves. When we are superheroes, we don't need to be asked to do things. We volunteer to carry tasks. We do all sorts of things out of the sheer passion and the sheer will that we have in our hearts. So, 
in UTM, we have what we call new academia as a plan. Remember, we need to have a systematic plan in place. We can't just, okay, go to class, teach them, go to the lab, guide them, go and supervise them. No, it's not simple like that. We have to provide an ecosystem. So new academia is the ecosystem that was introduced by the then vice chancellor in his new year address, 2012. Okay, what is this new academia? It totally transforms the whole notion of what is a traditional university. In new academia, faculty members are not just your lecturers. Faculty members, those of you who are in faculty computing, our faculty member is the CEO of our faculty is Dato Yasmin Mahmoud, the CEO for MDEC. Also another CEO for Faculty of Computing, because I belong to Faculty of Computing, is we have the CEO from other computer companies as well. So faculty members come from industry, come from practitioners, come from leaders, so beyond the traditional sphere of what is a faculty member. The philosophy of knowledge is not about knowledge per knowledge sake, but it is about looking for making yourself to be a change agent, for you to be able to change the world, for you to be heroes. Learning materials come from all over, not just in books and lecture notes, comes from MOOCs provided in various mechanisms. And we have various learning modes. And you learn not just in UTM. You learn in industry, you go for GOP, Global Outreach Program, in other countries. You go for mobility, exchange program, so that you experience life in another overseas university. And the outcome is not just a piece of paper the outcome is actually your knowledge, skills, the person you are, the characteristics that you display. So that headhunters will pick you. <laughs> headhunters will choose you because they are not looking for your grades. They are looking for you as a person. And to do that, we have new academia learning innovation to change the way we educate our students. Through learning materials, as well as learning modes, where learning is very much student-centered using blended learning methods. And we hope from that method of new academia learning innovation, we will indeed produce future heroes. All the best to you. I expect to see you flying everywhere around the world in 10 years' time. And I'll still be 17 by then also. Thank you.